From Roman gladiators to wildly successful superhero movies, humanity has a long history of valuing physical strength. In fact, the U.S. is home to more than 40,000 fitness gyms, according to the Global Health and Fitness Association. Every day, people walk through those doors looking to improve their lives. But there's another aspect of strength that's often neglected, mental toughness. In simplest form, when I think about someone who is mentally tough, I'm thinking of someone who shows up even though they don't want to. They endure every ounce of effort that they have. So even though on a given day, they may only have 70% effort, they give 100% of that 70. It's not always about being perfect because that's not real. So they exert every ounce of effort they have to give that day. That's Dr. Haley Perlis, an author, public speaker, and doctor of sport and performance psychology. She says people who are mentally tough willingly endure discomfort and even accept the risk of failing. Even though they hate to lose and even though they don't want to lose, they understand that there are some acceptances and sacrifices. So they are willing to endure a little bit of pain mentally and physically. Which isn't easy. Without consistent effort, many people become content following the path of least resistance, often giving us opposite results than what we want. Mental weakness is letting ourselves off the hook. That's very different than giving ourselves grace. I believe in giving ourselves grace, but I don't believe in letting ourselves off the hook where you come up with any reason, justify anything to not pursue that or to give up before you really needed to. And while these ideas are common in athletics, many people outside of professional sports don't usually think about mental toughness in our everyday lives. In fact, Perlis felt the same way until she stepped into the corporate world. It didn't take me long to realize that all the tools and techniques that I'm sharing with the athletes that I'm working with and that I used for myself as an athlete, I need them now more than I ever did as an athlete sometimes. And again, I believe that our thoughts directly impact our emotions and we are emotional creatures and our emotions can get in our way in business and in life. So we need to really get our thoughts and our stories right so that we can feel more of the pleasant things then allow us to follow through on our intentions. She says setting goals is the easy part. It's mental toughness that determines whether we follow through on our intentions. Consistency is hard, so we need to learn how to embrace challenges instead of cowering away. Perla says it starts with changing the stories we tell ourselves. There is a story in our minds that prevent us from following through, and that story usually begins with the word, but. I want to exercise after work today, but I'm too tired. I want to close up my email so that I can be with my family, but I will feel guilty if I don't respond to these last few emails. I want to pursue this, but I want to do that, but, and that, but is a story that gets in our way. And those buts create emotions that don't feel good. So we need to reframe those excuses. There are a couple ways, but one of the greatest ways is to look for the truth in our buts. So what do I mean by that? Going back to the examples that we already talked about, I want to exercise after work, but I'm too tired. Well, let's think about the truth. What have we been physically doing all day? Sitting. So the truth is that I'm quite physically well recovered. Wouldn't you say? I'm physically been resting all day. So am I physically tired? No, the truth is I'm physically well rested. I am emotionally and mentally exhausted. That's the truth too. Perillus believes that finding truth in your thoughts is a great motivator, which is why she doesn't believe in the popular saying, fake it till you make it. To not feel good enough to have doubt and then just to say, you'll be okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. In my consulting practice, I don't really hold the pom-poms up like that. You can do it. You can do it. So I offer a different strategy. I understand that people sometimes don't feel like they can do something. I am learning how to mountain bike so that this is my new sport. I'm in my second summer and I'm learning how to mountain bike and it's technical for me. And it is coming from the sports psychologist, my most feared sport. As she's learning to bike over rocks and through narrow trees, Perlis has had moments of self-doubt where she doesn't believe she can make a jump and finish the path. 
But instead of trying to fake a sense of confidence, Perlis leans into the truth. I'm a good listener. I listen to what people I trust tell me. I'm also technically gifted. So as an athlete, I was not the strongest person out there, but I had technique. So even though I don't necessarily think that I, you know, that the fear of the mountain bike and this current rock and this uphill get to me, I know that I'm coachable. So I listen to my, the person who's coaching me. I trust the person who's coaching me. I listen. And that's a little bit different than what I think other people do. You'll, you can do it. Or they look in the mirror and they say that they are that. I want you to find something that you are, you do have that skill set already. You believe it. You actually have the confidence and then apply those skills to that challenge of yours. Another important aspect of accomplishing a goal is motivation. While mental toughness means being consistent, even on days that you're not inspired, you still need to want to complete a task. Otherwise, it becomes exponentially more difficult to reach your goal. Perlis believes you can't force yourself to want something by pure will. Instead, she advises that we focus on activities that truly interest us. There are parents all the time who come to me because they want me to motivate their children to participate in a sport. And I'll never forget, there was one couple who came to me because they wanted me to motivate their daughter to swim. Swimming is a 4.30, 5 a.m. wake-up call to go and the hours. And this daughter did not want to be a swimmer. It was very clear. And unfortunately, I saw it. If they continue to force her into swimming, they were going to take away her love of activity. So I offered, let's really dissect what this daughter wants to do. And she found what, you know, other things that she was more interested in doing. But discovering what truly interests you isn't the only step. You then have to find a way to self-motivate. If you love to learn new things, do not get on the treadmill. You already know how to walk right, left, right, left, right, left. Go and learn something new. That's how I believe we become motivated. We already know our values in life, what we love in life. So see if you can bring those loves into that activity that you want to get motivated for and connect your existing loves to that activity. And once you're invested, Perla says the final part of mental toughness is wanting to succeed more than you're afraid to fail. I don't like to lose. Believe me, I don't like failure. I don't like to lose. But if we harp on the failure, if I let myself get down on myself for not succeeding, that is going to drain me of mental energy. That is going to drain me of emotional energy. And is that's not going to help me be motivated to try again, to go again. But if I'm focused on that, I want success more than I want the failure. You're still afraid, but you're almost put the fear on mute because you are focused on success. And that, I believe, helps people overcome their failure. When people fall down, wanting success helps them get back up. You can find more information about Dr. Haley Perlis and all of our guests on our website, RadioHealthJournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our writer-producer is Kristen Farah. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. People have signed up to serve our nation and us, and we owe them the fulfillment of the promises that we make to them. Why some believe America's veterans aren't getting the support they need. Then should we be worried about antibiotic use in animal agriculture? It's just a very complicated and difficult, complex situation. And, you know, no farmer wants to pump their animals full of antibiotics. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. If someone demonstrates financial needs, they should not be required to borrow anything. It should entirely be with grants. Continuing the conversation about a lack of affordability in higher education. Then, would you put a pet to sleep for a significant amount of money? Or would you alter or rework your child's college application if you thought it would get them into a college that they wouldn't otherwise get into? Asking ourselves the difficult questions. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. 
Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.